Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Well, hello, folks. Welcome back to About the House. I am so happy that everybody could join us again. We got a great show we're having today, and I'm very super excited about it. It is time sensitive to the fall, and I think you'll love it too. Uh, But hey, this is your audio university. Well, About the House. Everything about your home, from construction to remodeling, building, everything home-related. What makes this really so awesome is because there is so much content uh, that we put forth every uh, on every show that you're just going to have to listen to the show over and over again. And we are really getting a great following. I am really happy, and I'm so tickled that so many people are taking advantage of all this information and we're getting a lot of great feedback uh so hey you know if you guys ever have any questions i'd love for you to reach me my name is troy galloway i'm your humble host i am the owner of galloway building services hey just like this show we are one of a kind also there isn't another company that provides unique services we do for folks throughout the midwest every day we help people with construction consulting so if you've got a project that you want to do you want to be a general contractor you want to kind of guide your own way through but you'd kind of like to have a set an expert with you to kind of make sure that you you know you cross your t's and dot your i's and everything flows smooth and the job's being done right you give us a call. We also do uh, new construction inspections. New construction inspections, that's like if you're doing a brand new home or you're doing a kitchen job or you're doing a home a room addition or something like that. You need to make sure that as before you make your payments that things are being done right. Give us a call. We come out and help you with that. We're doing a lot more of that as because hey, we're all very fortunate at this time of life and a lot of work's happening out there. We also do commercial and residential building inspections. So we say if you're buying or selling a building and you want to make sure that you know what you're buying, give us a call. We do a lot of both. We also do a lot of pre-construction inspections, which is great uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, or that you make sure that it's being done, you know, it, that you know what you, what's going on there. Oh, there. So we stutter a little bit. As we all, and we also do construction conflict resolution and expert witnessing if any's ever needed. Sadly, there are times that, you know, you know, I just looked at a job today where the contractor just totally just did a horrific job. Actually, it's so bad and now because they didn't get a hold of me sooner that the house now is condemnable. But uh, we, we'll be going to court with them. So, yeah, we do that, uh, you know, make sure that and we are registered uh, in now as an expert witnessing in the state of Missouri. So, and we will be getting that in Illinois pretty quickly. So, you know, if you need somebody, give us a holler. My notes said here, it shows how long his notes are, is that we've been in business 42 years. But that's not quite true. We've been doing this now for 44 years. So as you could tell, without looking at uh, seeing me over the screen, got a little snow on the roof, but I'm just tickled that we got snow. <laughs> okay. Anyway, folks, our motto of our company is, is that we make sure that you're getting what you paid for. The job is being done right and you're not getting ripped off. So give us a call. Galloway Building Services. You can find us on our webpage at www.gallowaybuildingservices.com and or you can find us on Facebook, same thing, Galloway Building Services. You can find us on Instagram or many other social media uh, formats out there and we'd love to be able to help you in any way possible. Phone number again to the office is 636 Three nine four three one one two. Well, I am really tickled about this show, and we're going to kind of get started on this. I am going to be not only the host but the guest today. A lot of times, we get asked over and over again, "What can we do?" to get ready for the fall season so we don't get caught so it doesn't cost us a lot of money for any kind of mistakes or whatnot so i kind of just did a checklist of different things that i you know i recommend to people all the time now if you folks want my notes 
I want you, besides listen to the radio show, but if you want my notes, I'm going to throw this out at you that you give them to, I will send you my, all the notes off the show here today. All you have to do is reach us out through our web page, reach out through our Facebook page or whatever formats that you find us on, and or just call us, and I will definitely send it to you. I'll even give you my email address. Now, this is my personal business email address, and that is Troy at Galloway Building Service, singular, dot com. And you just text me or email me. I will send that to you. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and get started on here. And what we want to talk about is fall tips, getting our house ready for the winter. And so we're going to start on, I'm just going to start on the exterior and work my way around here. And uh, first I'm going to start on driveways and and our uh, blacktop and concrete driveways. And uh, what I recommend that you do, and it's very important, and I'll explain why as we go through the, each one of these items, not only what we to do, but why we should do it. But we want to, you know, in our concrete driveways, we get cracking. Same with blacktop driveways. We get a lot of cracking. And what happens is, is in these cracks during the winter time. We get our salt and our solvents and stuff that will fall down off our cars as they're melting. And then we also get a lot of snow and rain, and they get down in these cracks, and then they get frost up underneath it, and it just makes the cracks just go worse. It makes them, you know, explode. Also, too, what we see is that uh, we'll also get freezing up underneath our, uh, uh, this cracking going on. And that what that does is it literally will blow up our concrete, our asphalt. Concrete's more uh, damaging because it's less forgiving. So we want to make sure you seal your driveways. First, we want to seal our cracks, and then we're going to talk about sealing the driveway. But so for the cracks, now on asphalt, there is you could just get so we call them cold patches. Uh, which is just some, you know, tar uh, substance, and you just put that down in asphalt tar substance, and you just buy buy it by the tub, or you actually you can even buy it by go to one of the uh, one of the places that does black topping, and they'll sell you, uh, you know, a ton of it if you wanted to bring it back in your own box. But most folks don't quite need that, depending on the size driveway. But uh, concrete. They have a self-leveling mortar or concrete that they, it goes right into a caulking gun. Uh, normally, we put it in a quart caulking gun. It's like I said, it's self-leveling, and it just finds its own uh, level. Now, if it's a really, really bad crack, there's a foam rub or foam uh, gasket type material that we can put down below and then fill seal it in. Reason we want that type of gasket material foam is because we don't want this. You know, some of our cracks heck fire who knows how much washout we got underneath them drives so we don't want it to just continue to disappear so it saves us a ton of money but what's so cool about this is that it's elastic so as your driveway moves back and forth with the different temperature changes so this stays right with it seals it shut and it's just absolutely great also in many different municipalities, it's code compliant that you keep your cracks of your driveway take, sealed. So you're not only are you saving your driveway, but you're also taking being code compliant. Now, let's talk about sealing the, the driveway. That's actually putting something, a sealant, over the concrete itself. What's important about that is same thing with our salt and our different kind of uh, chemicals that they use on the roads will be dripping on our driveways. Oil also, you know, you know, so we still got some older cars out there that leak a little bit of oil. Uh, you might have an old Harley Davidson like mine that still probably leaves its mark wherever it goes. So, you know, uh, so it's really easy to apply this sealant. You just go and just, you can either put it in a pressure sprayer or you can roller it on. Just like our blacktop driveways, we got blacktop sealant and you can roller it on. Now, you can't spray it because it's a little bit, it's too thick. But you can roller it on, squeezy it on. Folks, you're going to save a ton of money just by taking care of being a little proactive with sealing our, taking care of our driveways, whether it be concrete or asphalt. So let's take care of that. I think that's one of the most, you know, very important. And this is the time of the year to do it. It's not too hot, not too cold. Perfect time. Now, we kind of walked around a little bit about the driveways and we're out of the vehicle. and We're, we're going to start up on the roof of the homes. 
are your buildings. And so what are we looking for when we get up on top of the roofs? Well, naturally, you're looking at your shingles and you're seeing, okay, do I need new shingles or not? Um, you, you could tell if you need new shingles for one, they're brittle. You know, that might just be and the curling. These are different tips to know that you're needing shingles. Also, you'll start sometimes you're cracking. You, and you check out our YouTube videos. I got a ton of these out there where we're talking about these and how they're how they deteriorate and how you can see how they're deteriorating. You can literally see it yourself. Also, it's bad after they're missing shingles. Well, yeah, there you go. This is the great time of the year to get your roof and shingles replaced. Here's a couple of great saving tips on roofing right now. Number one, roofers are slower at this time of the year, naturally, than they are in the highlight of the summer and the spring. So they're a little more hungry. They're trying to keep their crews moving as long as possible, you know, trying to keep their good guys on the roof and, and working. And, and so they're willing to give up a little bit of the profits just to keep their good workers busy. It's win-win for both of them. You know, they don't want to have to rehire good folks, and they also want to make sure, uh, you know, that everybody's staying busy. But here's the other one. So at our supply houses for our shingles, they always buy up a bunch of material ahead of time. A shingle material, riffing material. Well, if they have bought up too much of a particular a brand or style or color of a shingle, they need to move this out of them warehouses before the new year. So they're going to drastically lower the cost of the material. So between the savings of a sh the shingles and the savings of the labor, you can save a ton of money. So get up there and check that out. Some of the other things we want to be looking for when we're up there on our roof, looking at our gutters. Is our gutters, are they full? If they are, we definitely got to get them clean. And, you know, and if you're a senior citizen or if your roof is too high, just hire a handyman to go over there and clean out your gutters. You know, heck, he can clean out your gutters for an uh, an hour, you know, at best. And, you know, it might cost you 75 bucks. Well worth it. And I'm going to be talking to you more about why. And we've talked about this on other shows, too. But if our gutters are full of leaves or debris or whatnot, what happens is, is that when water and snow gets down inside of it during the course of the winter, well, then that snow, and I, we call it ice damming, and it, where that literally, that, that heat of your home will suck that ice up the roof, literally up into the roof and down into your walls. So you want to make sure that you have them gutters cleaned. Also, Whenever you're checking to see the flow of the gutters, which we're going to talk about downspouts in a minute, you'll see if it's holding any water. You you literally might have a gutter that's gotten a little loose over the season through some of the bad weather and such, or maybe last winter and it got too much ice in it and it's now it's sagging in spots. Perfect time to be able to check it. Take a garden hose and spray your gutters down. That's a good way to keep them, get them cleaned out and finished anyway. Also, you want to clean, make sure that you take your garden hose and flush them downspouts out. Just stick them down inside of your downspout openings, your outlet tubes, and, and in your gutter, and make sure they're blowing out clean. Because a lot of times them, that leaves and debris will get stuck up in there forever, and uh, your gutters look good. But the rest is not. So if you got to hire somebody, you, you can be the ground referee, you know, the gown coach and say, hey, I, I got to see some water coming out of these downspouts before I know that they're clean. So hey, the great way of making sure that's all done at the same time. Now on our downspouts, you know, so we know that they got to go down and they got the water's got to drain out of them. But when we get down to the ground, sometimes our downspouts go into an underground drain system. Well, it is that time of the year where our animals, you know, finding dry spaces, places to be, to kind of start thinking about wintering. It's been clogged gutters. They've not any water been going down these underground drains. So you got like rabbits in there. You got mice. Sometimes you even get rats living in there. We want them outside where we can observe them and, and where they're safe and we're safe. Also, you'll get snakes down in there because it's warm under the ground. They start to go up underneath there. So you want to flush them out. Now, how we check them, because sometimes you don't always see where they're daylighted. Okay, that's not a problem. 
but I want you to take your garden hose once again uh, and then put that down into your underground drain outlet and just let your water run and see if it backs up. If it backs up, then you know you got uh, some blockage somewhere. Uh, hopefully it's not animals, but whatever it is, we really don't care as much as we just need them cleaned. Now, there are companies out there that can specially power wash them out and blow that right out with a jet spray. Um, if you guys want to or you folks want to know who some of these companies are, give me a call. I would recommend to you some good companies that are very dependable and, and people that you can trust. So you want to make sure with that. Now, let's move on over here to our flashings. We're still up on the roof. We're still, we jump back. We've never quite left the roof here yet. So what do I want to talk about is now our flashings. So when you go around like on your chimney, and we got different types of chimney. We got a masonry chimney, which is like a brick or a stone uh, chimney. Make sure that your flashing going around it isn't rusting. Make sure it's sealed tight up against it, you know, to the chimney. Uh, that you know, it are not any cracks or crevices. And if you have anything that looks like water could seep in it. Don't use the garden hose this time. We don't want more water down in there, but this, but, but you will be able to see, hey, I need to get this serviced. And then call, if you can't, if you're not able to do it yourself, call, you know, a handyman service or somebody to go up there and take a look at it for you. Also, now, if you have a wood chimney chase, that's where usually our prefab fireplaces go. They're a wood built, stick built chimney chase. Same thing there. You're looking at your flashing, making sure there's no rusting going on on our flashing, making sure that it's, you know, that it looks like it's good and watertight. Look up on top of the chimney caps, both masonry and prefab, and see if our chimney caps, now a prefab, free, where it's a metal cap on top of your chimney, make sure it's not rusted, make sure where the chimney pipe comes up and out of the opening, that is sealed tight, watertight. You can see that. If it's a mortar, which would be a chimney cap, we call it a crown, uh, that would be on top of our masonry chimneys. Make sure it's not cracked or br missing pieces. I got a ton of videos talking about that. And, you know, it, it worst comes to worst, you want to hurry up and get it done because winter times are coming and it's blowing up quick. It just gets you some good silicone caulking. But anyway, so we want to make sure that that's sealed up there so no water is getting down inside our chimney. How would you know if you're getting water inside of your chimney? That's a great question. And how, and I don't even think a lot of home inspectors ever even pay any attention to this, but we always do uh, because of the damage that can be caused. But it's real simple. You just get up underneath there uh, and look up, you take your flashlight, look up your chimney. If you see rust, well, that's a good sign you got water moisture problems. There should be no rusting going on inside your chimney. You see, if your damper, that's that little flap inside of your, that lets the air in and out of that, which we could talk a little bit about that a little bit later. But uh, you want to make sure that that's operable and no rust on it. Uh, so these are sure signs there. Sometimes you'll even see our grates, our metal grates, where the damper's been left open. There's rust on that, where water's been coming down. So these are great places to be looking. Also, too, if you can see, you want to see daylight, you might not always get to see a really clear vision of it all the way through but you want to make sure you see daylight all the way from the bottom to the top or stick a flashlight down in the bottom and then up where you stand on top of the chimney and look down why well if it's out if your chimney cap is kind of opened up you might have birds in there and birds will be blocking it that's a great place for birds to make nest you know nice warm places for their babies sometimes they get stuck in there and can't get out sadly and so either way, we that's a safety hazard. We don't need it. They don't need it. So we want to make sure we take care of all of our flashing while we're up there. Your stack pipe flashing, that's where your sewer pipes and stuff, they coming up and through, they're protruding through the roof. And uh, make sure that that metal that's on the roof is uh, all tight against the roof. Make sure that the storm collar is, to, is is in good shape around your chimney pipes. You know, this is for your, this isn't for your venting pipes for your sewer, but it is for like your gas uh, furnace and such. And you want to make sure, because they don't normally go up the chimney, they have their own independent chimney. And so you want to make sure that's taken care of uh, tight. Now, I want to back up here for a second. So on our metal chimneys for our furnaces, they have a tendency to get rusty. 
So while you're up there, if you see rust, go get some Rust-Oleum paint and paint it. Now, when I do an inspection, I usually call it sealing slash painting because Rust-Oleum paints is a, well, I'm throwing out a brand name, but I'm sure there's other good quality paints out there. But you want something that's metal, that you can paint metal with, that's a rust retardant, uh, and nothing's rust proof, uh, rust retardant, and that, well, I guess some things are, but everything deteriorates, so it's not forever. But you, it's a cheaper to put a 5 to $10 paint job on that. Looks nice than it is to, also, but to have to replace that chimney pipe can cost you a ton of money. So who wants to spend hundreds to thousands of dollars for chimney when we could just do it, fix it for five to ten bucks, right? Oh, make sure that rust is all cleaned up. All righty, so we kind of wandered off of the roof. There's maybe some other things. And, and actually, if you ever get up on a roof and you see some questionable things, contact me, uh, contact our web page, contact my Facebook page, or even my web uh, my email address. And we'll give all that to you at the end of the show, too, again. and just, But it's under Galloway Building Services. And, uh, oh, and you can find this here radio show on our Facebook page, too, called About the House, and also on YouTube TV. So check that out, too. So we want to make sure if you have any questions or say, hey, is this right or wrong? I'm not for sure what I'm looking at. Just text me a picture or send me a picture. No charge whatsoever. And we will te- give you an answer back. And if I can't answer it, we if you've noticed why we're listening, if you're a follower of our show, we've had some great people on here that can answer any questions. If I can't, we got them that can. So don't be bashful. All righty, so we kind of wandered off the roof, which is really important. That we get that it's all nice and watertight. Now, let's wander over to our siding. And siding, so we have a different types of siding out here, and we're, we're going to do a show on siding. But right now, I'm not really worried about the types of siding as I am one-coat siding or double-coat siding. What do I mean by that? Well, as a lot of us know, there was a we've a lot of our homes have been recited where we've just took our vinyl siding or you know normally it's vinyl aluminum sometimes steel sometimes and we went right over top of the existing siding siding is not i repeat siding is not a waterproof solution it is not it's supposed to keep the water from going in the house but water gets in behind it and it's supposed it's supposed to breathe. It's a and that's it's designed this way. You'll see on like on vinyl siding and such, there's actually weep holes where we know moisture's getting in behind it. Brick the same way. We're going to talk. Brick is also considered a siding, whether it's a full brick house or a, a veneer brick. So we want it to. What you want to do is make sure that whether it's a whatever type of siding you have, where the siding meets either trim. Or it meets masonry, brick, stone, etc. Uh, that that connection, that joint where they two join up against each other, make sure that is sealed tight. Now on new construction, when we do new building new homes, now that is a code issue that we want to make sure that that's always done. But a lot of our aftermarket siding jobs. They don't think about it or it's been there for a few years and it's just like disappeared. And if it's mortar to mortar, you know, you'll see our mortar cracking. Seal that because you don't want moisture get into the home. You don't want air getting into it. You know, we don't need any uh, anything like that getting inside of our home. And also, you'll as you're walking around, you're going to see where you maybe have some broken siding like vinyl siding. Weed eaters and lawnmowers are, oh, they just play heck on our siding. And you can always tell when there's a weed eater been around there because it's a, the bottom lay of the course of our siding is all broke up, got holes and cracks in it, you know. Well, if any way possible, replace it. If not, seal it up the best you can to get through the winter. But you got to get them areas taken care of also because they're no longer, you know, if there are holes in it, there's no longer doing anything for you there in them particular sections. And they're allowing deterioration to happen, bugs to get in and whatnot. 
so also we want to make sure that you also have on, especially on our vinyl siding. And I'm and I reason it brought this to my attention is because just our last weekend we had some vicious winds. Oh, they blew tough. And of course we know how our falls do in our springs. They got some mean winds and storms come blowing through. Well, they blow our siding off, or they loosen it up. So you want to make sure that if you lost your siding or it's come unsnapped or anything, you tighten it up. Just whatever it takes, replace a piece or, tie, you know, renail it up, whatever it takes to make sure that area is secured. Now, we also are going to talk about a little bit about the soffit and fascia. Now, fascia is what some people call it gutter board. But that is that overhang or that part that's on the eaves. And you want to make sure all our fascia boards are also in good shape. Uh, make sure that they're not deteriorated. Make sure that if it's a metal wrap, that it's not loose or coming loose. Look for your nails. See if they're backing off out of the opening. Normally, when you see, which we'll talk more about this on our siding show, but if you see nails backing out of your fascia, that's a good sign that we might be having some, the wood no longer will hold the nail. It's not 100% true, but it's true enough that you want to maybe drill a little bit deeper or put that on your plan for next year. But right now, we're just trying to button it up for winter, right? So we want to make sure if you're missing any soffit, that's your overhang, uh, underneath your overhang. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, you know, between the house and the gutter uh, board. And you make sure you're not missing anything there. If it's an open soffit, just make sure it's well secured, painted. Make sure you don't have any openings where animals like squirrels and such, because they're coming in. We'll talk about that on another show, but they're coming in right now. The poor ants, they get cold. They want to be dry, too. And uh, so you make sure that they don't have any way. Make them find a tree or give them a, a, a squirrel house or something, but not your house where they could eat your wiring so, or, or, or feces in the roof or you know, attic. You don't need any of that. So make sure that's all buttoned up nice and tight. Now we want to wander around also, too, about... Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the brick before we go a whole lot further. So on our brick, and now we have two different types of brick, but either way, what I mean by two different types, we got really brick systems, I should say. And, uh, you know, we got a really great show of St. Louis Brick. They came on here. Uh, Jay, is a he's an outstanding young man, quality. You love to listen to his show. I highly recommend it, St. Louis Brick. And uh, so... You want to make sure that your tuck pointing is all good. Now, tuck pointing, that's that grout lines in between our brick. Make sure that you're not, that it's not loose, it's not coming out, making sure that it's sealed tight, you don't have any voids in it. Because there again, that's a place where moisture is going to get in. Any place that moisture can get into there, you're going to, at this time of the year, you're going to get freezing and thawing. So we have two different types of brick systems. we got a brick veneer and we got a full masonry home. Full masonry is just exactly what it says. It's actually framed. We don't see it. We see most of them in our older homes in the city. We don't really build like that anymore. But brick veneer or masonry, stone veneer on the outside. And actually, so it's just a stick built house. And this is actually just like a siding over it. Now, either systems, you want to make sure that they're watertight. On our brick veneer homes, our masonry veneer homes, you'll see sometimes at the bottom of them, uh, you'll see weep holes. It looks like somebody made a mistake and forgot to mortar that joint between the brick. That is designed to be there on purpose, sometimes for moisture to escape. These are supposed to breathe. So, and that's very important for mold and other types of problems. So, but some people don't like that opened up uh, space at the bottom of the brick. So they'll put rope in it uh, because they don't want the bugs and stuff to get into it. So they put a rope wick and that too, that works. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get, I'll let the masons say which one's best, you know, because I think it's a personal choice. And then sometimes what we have is that we literally will have uh nothing literally nothing uh but what they will do they don't no kind of moisture wicking whatsoever 
I don't know that I agree with that. As a building science uh, instructor, I, I don't. I, I disagree with that. But we see the Masons would, would, would do that. Talk about maybe that's fine. But you'll do see that they have a, like a brick, uh, like a flashing coming out from underneath that last course of brick over the foundation. Now, we want to make sure our dirt around the home, which we're going to talk. I, I, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, kind of to my notes. But I think it's important that you don't want your dirt to be up over your weep holes if you have weep holes on your brick. And we'll talk more about that a little bit further when another, a little bit further into the show here. Now, if you have either brick missing or you got siding missing, it really is a great time to get this done. One of the reasons is a great time because you are buttoning up your home for the winter. But another great reason is, is because Heck, the guys are slowing down, and, and you're probably going to get a better price because they're trying to keep their men busy again. Just like the roofers, they're trying to keep their guys busy. So it's a great opportunity that you can help others by giving them work, and you also can take the benefit of them being slower, kind of the supply and demand thing. So take sure, make sure you take care of all of that. Now, something I get asked a lot, and it, a, a quite a bit, honestly, and I see a lot of it in commercial but I also see it in residential also, where you see on our brick that we'll be. It looks like it's stair stepping down the cracks, and, and a lot of times it'll literally that from that moisture and stuff getting in there will literally blow a brick or a stone, literally break it in half. And now that I said it, you're going to be looking out there thinking, "Oh, that sounds crazy." Well, uh, that's what's happening, and and but when you see it stair stepping down like that, that is a sure sign of leakage from above, either from a window seal leaking around it, which is quite common if you see it under a window. But if you see it from up by your fascia board, under your gutter board, that means that they probably, remember what we talked about, your downspouts and your and your gutters being cleaned, that water backing up and coming down, that's what's happening. It's costing you a ton of money. A little bit of caulk will fix that. We'll talk about windows here a little bit as we go along. But you want to make sure all of this is taken care of. Now, an old mason told me, brick mason told me years ago. Now, and this is a great time to get this done too, if you can get everything done. And that's seal your brick. We talk about sealing uh, our, uh, our driveways. Well, we also have a brick sealant. And it's just power. You could spray it right on with a pressure sprayer or roller it either way. But that old mason told me, you do this and you will never have to do any tuck pointing. So you figure out what's cheaper. A fifty-dollar can of, uh, of 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 sealant, or thousands of dollars of having somebody crawling around on the side of your house for a month or so trying to tuck point it, and uh, it's it's a it's a best bang for your buck. So that, I'd rec I highly recommend it, whether you can or not. Put it on your budget. Maybe not this year, but next year. Bottom line, right now we're trying to get water tight, so we want to make sure we got that. Now, before we leave our siding section here. Let's talk about all the protrusions coming out of the home. What do I mean by protrusions? Anything that's sticking out of your home or going into your home. It's, it's, and what it is, so like for instance, our gas lines, our Freon lines our, of our air conditioners, our electrical lines, our cable, I should say, lines going in and out. Anything that goes in and around like that are absolutely places that you want to make sure is tight. Make sure that no, you don't want animals getting in there. You don't want bees, wasps, any kind of unwanted critters in there. But you also don't want air coming through there. All that does going to cost you a ton of money on your heating and cooling bills. And we talked about that. If you go back to look at one of our radio shows we did last winter about how to make yourself a little more energy efficient, we talk about that. But right now we're talking about it because it's fall and I really it save you a ton of money. And if the wife gets upset, she sees bees coming out of there in the spring. Guess whose fault it is? It's gonna it's gonna be yours, not you know, not them poor wasps. So make sure that's all taken care of. All right, now one other thing that really, really is important, and you'll get this off of most fire marshals' websites uh, and fire safety, and that is our dryer vents. Dryer vents have a tendency which more often than not, of course, naturally, lint goes through there because it's coming out of the dryer. Lint is the number one. Now, I'm just repeating what I've been told. 
Lint is the number one cause of house fires. Lint is highly flammable. As a matter of fact, it's so flammable, the lint out of your dryer lint vent is, that people like myself, we literally will take it out of our dryer. Okay, well, this had nothing to do with the fall, but it kind of does winter. We take that lint out of our dryer. We put it in toilet paper holders and stuff it in there real tight, and we use it for fire starter in our fireplaces. Man, it just gets hot fast. Poof, it just takes off. Great fire starter. But, man, we don't want that in our house where, you know, where we got problems. So make sure that you got your dryer vents cleaned out all the way through, but at least at the exterior where you can look into it. Then uh, that's really important. As a matter of fact, I recommend that you don't even run your dryer when you go to bed at night because I know several people, their houses have burned down in the middle of the night while they're sleeping because they left the dryer on. So... That's just, it's that important. It's that's that easy to fix. It's just that easy to look at, and it's just that much dangerous. So, folks, do that for your for heaven's sakes. Take care of yourself when it comes to that. All righty. So now we kind of got done with a little bit of our exterior of our siding. Let's move over here to decks and patios and porches. So we really haven't done a deck show on decking. Uh, so we'll kind of probably repeat ourselves on that one. But for right now, we're trying to get ready for the winter because of the moisture and the snow and the heavy, wet ice storms and the weight can cause collapsing of decks, a moisture coming in behind them, tons of different problems. Uh, so what I want you to do is go replace, look at your decking boards on top, your handrails, see if it hangs loose, see if you got rot, see how safe your boards are. If you need any deck replacement boards, now's the time to get them because if you've got snow and ice sitting on them, you're not going to see it. And then you're going to, if it gets that rotted and it's not, they don't get any better, you'll fall right on through and get, get worse yet. Your loved one falls through and gets hurt. Your friends fall through and get hurt. So make sure you're nice and tight. If you can't, they're in good shape. If indeed that it's in good shape, then seal it. Get some good deck sealer. It's not that expensive. Uh, don't get the cheapest that money can buy because you pay for what you get. Don't necessarily have to get the most expensive, but go get a good quality product, uh, they, and uh, which I, I give you some recommendations, not over the radio because nobody's paying me to do this. So they don't get a free recommendation, but I will if indeed you contact me. And I'll give you some great ones that I time-tested, been around for a long time. It works great. Um, so... <laughs> We used to use diesel fuel back in the old days for sealant like that, but I don't recommend it, even though it's great stuff. After it evaporates, that oil stays into it, makes it a beautiful red shine, and it's a great sealant. But in the meantime, till that diesel fuel dries, it could burn your house down. And uh, that happened to us several years ago, so we don't really uh, – we didn't burn the house down, but the customer lit a fire out there barbecuing on his fresh, stained, clean house, uh, deck and siding, caught a fire. Bad idea. Never done it again. And uh, but you know it was an economical way, not a very smart way. So also now we got our decks, topping boards. We also have our handrail. We got all that taken care of. If and all possible, which most of the time it is, look underneath your deck. And what are you looking for underneath there? You're looking for your joist to see if anything's rotted or damaged, broken. But more importantly, what I want you to be looking at is your hangers. Them are them galvanized pieces of metal that your joist are hanging in and sitting into. If you see or they're there again, check out our check us out on YouTube. Yeah, I got tons of that stuff out there. And you'll see that we literally them will be rusted through. Now, we did have a little bit of a problem uh, with material change in the early 2000s. They made us stop having the existing type of treated wood, and they put in this new type of wood. They didn't like our existing type because it had arsenic in it. So they make it. So, oh, you just got to love the government. Well, they, I, I don't think these folks have a clue when, sometimes when they make laws. they get And you pay somebody to make a law, they're going to make a law. Don't make any difference if it makes sense. Well, this new material that was supposed to be safer than the arsenic is more caustic. It was so caustic that literally that material would eat the steel, the galvanized material out. And it rust away and disappear. 
Well, we didn't realize that at first. Nobody knew that because nobody told us. Well, so we got a lot of decks out there totally, you know, they're, they're hazardous. They're dangerous. Also, your bolts going into your home. That material is so caustic, it literally ate the bolts out. Now, that's the part that's holding it against the house. It's holding up from falling down. So make sure you see rust. That's a sure sign. We got to take care of that. Also, your nails on your joist hangers. See if you've got any rust or anything on them. Now, here's a little tip that uh, on, on that. If you see the joist hangers look good, your, uh, your bolts look good, but the nails holding your joist hangers are rusting, well, what that means is that they did not use the right type of nails. The right hanger nails will not be doing that. If everything else is not, they won't be. If they're the only ones, is they probably just used the wrong nail. A lot of the guys out there, they don't know any better. Or maybe they just run out of the uh, right nails and uh, they just used up what they had in the back of the truck. You didn't know any better. They're long gone. Their taillight warranties just already expired, meaning that when you no longer see their taillights, or they don't have a warranty anymore. So make sure that that's an issue you could take a look at. Now's a great time to try to take care of that. Also, so we talked about inspecting hangers and deterioration and water and moisture and sealing. So let's now let's talk about washout. Now that we usually see this under our porches and our concrete patios. Uh, what washout is. You'll see a void up underneath our porches or our concrete patios. And we want to make sure that we don't want water getting down inside of there. Remember we talked about that with, below, you know, freezing and thawing. That's one thing. But it's also a fabulous place for like skunks to get into, possums to get into, mice, rats, etc., and they burrow right down underneath there because, hey, that's a nice spot for them, you know, and it's a dry and it's safe for them. Uh, but you don't want that uh, because all that washout's only going to continue to get worse. And if you get animals living in there, they're only going to be burrowing in there more, even making it even worse. They hollow it out. You could have a possibility, especially on concrete patios where they literally will fall and break and cause even more trouble. So we want to make sure that's all taken care of. All right. Now, we want to, how do you fix that? I want to talk about that real quick. Here's a real quick, simple fix. You get washed out. Some guys will say, say use dirt. Well, I got a better idea. And it really, really works great. And it's simple. Go get some fast, quick crete or uh, sack crete. Depending on and what it is, it's dry concrete. You buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Buy it by the bag, 40 pounds, 60 pound, 80 pound bag, whatever you can handle. And you just shove up that underneath there dry. Put it up underneath there dry and just keep packing that hole until it's, and then if it settles, you can pack a little bit more until you get that filled up. Why that works so great? Number one, the varmints aren't going to come through it. They're not going to eat through it. So that's going to be good. Wash out. It's not going to wash out because uh, it's a heavy concrete. And number three, it also helps you with any kind of support. So you get added extra support to it. So that's a great tip. And and actually, it's probably going to be fine, cheaper and quicker and easier to obtain a bag of sack crete or quick crete than it is to have a truck a truck load of dirt or dirt being hauled over there. Also, I want you to check all of your posts, whether it be deck post, porch post, any of your post, uh, support post. See what they look like. Look at the base of them. Is it safe? Deteriorated? If in question, if it's wood, take your pocket knife or a screwdriver or something. Just kind of prod a little bit, poke around them. Make sure it's not rotted away and make sure it's safe. Uh, most of the time, we're, nowadays, we put our post. Post should really never sit right on concrete. Uh, we still do a lot, but in that, we really like to have some sort of a metal stand so it can breathe up underneath it um, for snow and whatnot. Uh, but also, we want it to concrete being porous. It creates wood to rot. So and these are great areas that you want to make sure is taken care of. Also, now let's go ahead and move around a little bit about uh, AC units. So we're, this is a twofold thing. I want you to go around the home and if you got brush up against the house, your brush, your trees or whatever, cut it back. 
Now, some codes is to us 12 inches, some codes 18, some codes 2 foot. I like 2 foot. I like 2 foot because that way it's easy for me to get around the house and keep a watch of my exterior of the home. Also, it deteriorates the siding, deteriorates the brick, vines get up inside of it, so it's all a problem. Uh, but around our AC units, our air conditioner units, it's really important that we get that all off of there because that is impeding the, pro, the, the the operation of the unit, and it's going to deteriorate. It's going to make it over at work. When it comes springtime, it's going to create more problems. Get your garden hose out. I want you to spray that guard, that compressor down. Get all that dirt off of it. Get it ready for spring. Uh, that way, if when spring hits, you're ready to go. Make sure that's all taken care of and cleaned up. If you see that your compressor out there is leaning more than 10 degrees, Get some bricks or something or some sort of bracing support system and brace up underneath it so as that it's as level as possible. It's going to be able to make your unit work much, much more efficient. And uh, if it's a good uh, home inspector, he'll catch it. It's part of what's on his test, and he should know that. So you want to make sure. You're free on lines. That's your lines going in and out of the house. Now, we've already talked about securing, making sure they're sealed around going into the house. But you want to, if you can have a chance, it's a great time to make sure that they're all nice and tight. Make sure that they are, you got the insulation wrap around it. Make sure that they're safe looking. Now we're going to wander over here to our water lines, our spigots. And we have a lot of frost-free spigots. Now, what I'm seeing a lot out here is I got frost-free spigots. Uh, that people take the garden hose off of, and they and they they that they think that's great. But if that frost-free spigot doesn't leaning t- downward, it doesn't have the chance to finish dripping out. Uh, which I got a YouTube video of this exactly how they work, and it can still bust on you. It can still bust on you if it's not draining out properly. Another thing I see people do is they leave the garden hoses on it. They say, "Well, Troy." I turned the water off downstairs. Well, remember what I just said. If it doesn't have a chance to drip free, then you still, chances are it's going to blow out. So you got water in there. So you want to make sure that your garden hose, I, I turn off your water outside, inside the house. I love it. Great idea. But if you make sure that you take that garden hose off, because uh, come springtime when you turn that water on, I'll be hearing the screams now. Oh, it's flooding in my house. I got water pouring in my house. I hear it all the time. I hear it every single spring. So take care of it now, and you'll just have to listen to your neighbor's screen while you actually grin from ear to ear because you listen to this show. (laughs) You tell them. Listen to the show. Learn something next time. So that's a great tip, and I really, really, really tell you folks this has to be done. All right. Now, we don't want any of our dirt being up on top of our band board or where our framing starts. We cat creates moisture issues. That's a termite problem. Big termite problem. Creates rot, creates mold. I get called out all the time for this kind of inspections uh, where somebody uh, had missed this and got this dirt all up. But we see a lot of it when we mulch up around our front of our homes. and We think it's pretty. It is pretty. But you're creating problems. Code says six to eight inches below bottom band board to the bottom top of the ground. Sorry about that. So we want to make sure we take care of that. We why six to eight inches? Some and and it's because of snow. We can easily here in the Midwest easily get a foot of snow or more, and or when snow's blowing up and drifting up against the house, it's a great idea. Don't want that to happen. We don't want that. Just like it does on the gutters, it'll also dam up and leak and right into your home. Now you've got mold and water problems, termite home, you know, just the list goes on and on. So you want to make sure. Now, as much as we want to make sure that we have it not too high on the house, around the house, we want to make sure that we don't have any low spots around the perimeter. One of our hot spots around low spots, if it's a new home, is from wood or dirt settling. But also, if we have a downspout, that's leaking. So we want to make sure that that doesn't get blowed out right there. These are all great tips there to make sure. See, the water will get down there and freeze and thaw and expand. It's going to cause you foundation issues, leakage issues, a ton of different things. So these are all great ideas that we want to make sure. There's a whole bunch more. I have more notes here than I have the time allowed here to do this show. So like I said, if you want these notes, you contact me. 
con, you know, through my webpage, www.gallowaybuildingservices.com, our Facebook page, Galloway Building Services. Or email me, Troy at Galloway Building Service. Dot com, and uh, I will send you these notes. Just say, hey, I heard the radio show. I want to check out the notes. And we're going to do one more last special here. For every 10 people that contact us, for every 10, up to 10 people we're going to give this out to. So for the first 100, 10 people is going to get a free infrared inspection. That way we're going to be actually looking to make sure we have any problems around the house for air leakage or water issues. There's a ton more out here. I just, sorry, I don't have the time to get them all, uh, but they're just so important. They're going to save you a ton of money, a ton of time, and come springtime, you can go fishing. That's what we really want. Fishing, hunting, camping, getting the heck out of a cold winter and enjoying life again. Well, folks, thank you for listening to our show about the house. I am so tickled that you listen. And I want to give a shout out to our producer, Joey. Hey, he did. He didn't ask me. He always gets embarrassed when I say this. But folks, if you need a good producer to help you with your show, get a hold of Joey. He puts his name on the bottom of these things, so you know you can contact him. You can go through the same web page. He's a he. He does. He helps me with these things. Our Facebook page and contact him. He'll do you a first class job. I highly recommend him. Thank you, folks. Y'all have a blessed day. And call me if you ever have any troubles. Three one four five two zero six six. Five, five. That's my personal number, it's office number, 636-394-3112. Y'all have a blessed day. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com.